Hi everyone! I finally decided to make this video for anyone who wants to try oil painting and they have no idea what to do with it. This video is meant to just be the basics, just to get you started, to give you an idea. Today we're going to get into what oil paint is, like what it's made out of, how it works, how to use it. We're going to talk about mediums, the difference between oil and acrylic, and we're also going to talk about safety because I want to make sure that you guys are not doing anything crazy, not setting your houses on fire. Stick around and we'll get into all of that. To start with oil painting, there are eight basic things you will need. A surface to paint on, which can be canvas or panel, paint brushes, which you can find in any art store, and they'll even be sectioned based on what paint they're intended for, oil paint, duh, rags or paper towels to wipe your brushes on, a palette, I'm using a piece of glass that I took out of a picture frame and taped a gray piece of paper to the back of it. Make sure you tape all along the sides because the edges can be sharp and I've cut myself on them by accident before, so be careful. And since oil paint is not water soluble, you will need a solvent capable of thinning the paint and cleaning it off your brushes. I use Gamzol, which is 100% pure odorless mineral spirits. It's also the standard for a lot of art schools and classroom settings because it's the safest. You'll also need some kind of container to hold your solvents and mediums. I'm using a jar from groceries and a little sauce dish. And lastly, you will need a glass scraper, which you can find in any hardware store and even some local pharmacies. This will be used to scrape the dried up oil paint off of your palette. In my opinion, this is the best way to clean your palette. I'm using a table on carpet, so that's why it's wobbling. <laughs> As for colors, if you are a beginner painter, I suggest buying an introductory set to start off with, which is less expensive than artist grade oils, and it will contain all the essential colors you will need. Check the description of this video for a link to that and and all the other products I will mention in this video. I've put together a list of basic common colors that would make a great palette for skin tones, nature, and just about anything. Titanium white. I have a ginormous tube because this is the color I run out of the most, so I thought I'd make my life easier by just getting a huge tube. Mars or ivory black will work just fine. Yellow, a bright yellow like cadmium yellow light, lemon yellow or Hansa yellow light, all of these will work. Yellow ochre, which is a dark earthy yellow, burnt sienna, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, and sap green. If you want to go a step further, you can add cerulean blue hue, phthalo blue, emerald or viridian green. Once you get some practice and you decide you want to keep oil painting, you can continue to grow your collection to other colors. For instance, I'm in love with Gamblin's Radiant line, and I've used so much of these colors in my water and flower paintings. I don't use a lot of black paint in my work, it tends to be a bit too pigmented for me, so instead I mostly use Payne's Gray. There's a common misconception that oil is very toxic and hazardous and this is simply not the case. Oil paint is made out of two main ingredients which is linseed oil, sometimes safflower or poppy oil. The other ingredient is the pigment that gives it color. So the pigment is mixed with the oil and boom you have oil paint. Linseed oil is made from flax seeds which is, you guessed it, it's a plant. It's a plant-based oil. We actually have flaxseed oil and flax seeds that us hipsters like to consume every so often for our omega-3s and such. So that right there tells you it's natural, it grew out of the ground. Depending on the color, it can have a pigment in it that is toxic as a powder if you inhale those particles while they're a powder. Cadmium, cobalt, um, lead, if it's in the tube mixed in with the oil paint itself, you should be just fine unless you let the paint dry and then sand the surface and set those particles loose again, in which case, sure, that can be toxic again. But again, only if it's a powder. Those same pigments can be found in acrylic paint, and because acrylic is water soluble, people seem to think it's non-toxic. It even gets labeled as non-toxic on the package when in fact it's made from plastics and chemicals, it's not safe for skin or inhalation because it gives off ammonia and formaldehyde gases as it dries which is a carcinogen according to the National Cancer Institute. Personally, acrylic dries much too fast for me. I like to take my time with mixing colors and with acrylics, it's literally drying as I'm working on my palette. Like I'm mixing colors and the paint's already drying, which is... That doesn't work for me. The only potentially toxic component to oil painting isn't even the oil paint itself. It's the mediums that can contain solvents or petroleum distillates and other chemicals. Just make sure you paint in a well-ventilated room and you'll be fine. I use Gamblin because they're seriously dedicated to making materials that are much safer for artists. 
A medium is an additive that you can mix in with paint to change the consistency and add different effects such as transparency, gloss, speeding or slowing the drying time, leveling brush strokes, making the paint flow more smoothly, etc. I'm going to show you some examples of a few of these and how they work. If you're concerned with toxicity, Gamblin has a completely non-toxic solvent-free fluid made from safflower oil and alkyd resin. It improves the flow of the paint, speeds up drying time, and increases gloss. There's also a non-toxic solvent-free gel which is designed to retain the brush strokes instead of smoothing them out flat like the fluid, so this gel would be great if you're going for a thicker, more impasto effect. My favorite medium right now is Galkid, which is an alkyd resin medium and fairly recent to the world of oil painting. It levels brush strokes and makes the surface really smooth, flat, and glossy, and lately I've really been enjoying this effect in my work. It also speeds up the drying time by a lot, so layers with Galkid in them will typically dry within 24 hours, sometimes even sooner if it's a really thin layer. Galkid gel is another great medium for an impasto effect, and it will speed up the drying time and increase transparency. Stand Oil is a thicker linseed oil and the best way I can describe its consistency is it's kind of similar to honey. And the best way to use it is by diluting it with 50% solvent like Gamzol. Just for the sake of example, I'm mixing it straight into the paint, which I don't recommend you do, I'm just showing you how it works. Stand Oil will slow down the drying time and it dries glossy. Gamzol is the solvent we're working with and basically it just thins the paint. It's gonna increase the drying time, but it won't add gloss or anything like that. You can use it as a medium in your work and you can use it to clean your brushes. You want to reserve the mediums containing a lot of oil for your final layers, such as stand oil for example, because there is a very basic rule you should follow with oil paint to ensure that everything dries and cures properly. That rule is called fat over lean. So basically your first layer would have more solvent in it. Every layer after that will gradually have a bit more medium. You want the layers that will dry the fastest to be on the bottom. The more oily medium you add, the slower it will dry. Oil is also very flexible and it goes through some surface changes as it dries. So what would happen if you don't follow the rule? Let's say you have a slow drying layer with a lot of oily medium on the bottom. Even if the fat layer feels dry to the touch before adding another layer, don't add a lean layer over it because the lean layer will dry much faster than the bottom fat layer. The bottom layer with more oil will continue drying and as it does, it can go through some surface changes which can cause the completely dried top lean layer to crack. To avoid this happening, follow fat over lean. And oil paintings don't have to contain three layers, they can have more or less, it's just a basic example. Make sure to keep the room you work in well ventilated. Read the labels of all your materials. Don't eat or drink around your materials, and don't eat or drink the materials. A lot of materials are flammable, so don't bring a flame around them. That is a bad idea. Some materials are also combustible, such as Galkid and linseed oil. Linseed oil generates heat as it reacts with oxygen, so if there's a rag that you wiped linseed oil on, just make sure to throw it in some water, and don't just leave it out and then leave the house. Also, bad idea. Do not pour paint thinner or solvents down the drain. This is not only illegal, but it is bad for the environment. Collect the used stuff in a large tin or jar until it fills up and contact your local water treatment facility or toxic waste treatment facility to find out where to take them. Varnishing your paintings will give it a unified, finished appearance and also protect them from dust and other particles. That pretty much covers the basics of oil painting. This is the first video in a series of oil painting tutorials I'm making for this channel. In those videos, you will see how to create oil paintings from start to finish, priming panels, cleaning brushes, and all that fun stuff, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel to see those videos and more of my painting time lapses. As you embark on your journey of oil painting, please remember to be patient with yourself and be kind to yourself. Don't expect your early works to be masterpieces or compare yourself to other artists. It's okay to make something you don't even like. Just remember that the best way to learn is not by reading a book or watching a video or having someone tell you how to do it. It's by physically doing it yourself and experimenting. Don't worry about messing up or doing it wrong. Through practice, you will figure out your technique. Every artist paints differently. It takes time to develop your skill and figure out what you enjoy. So focus on the process, not the product. If you're not ready to paint something realistic, just do something abstract and random. Play with the colors you like. Familiarize yourself with how the paint feels and how different mediums affect it. 
Just let yourself have fun and lose yourself in the paint. Don't worry about being too technical. I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. Oil paint is amazing. I don't want to work with any other kind of paint. And you can paint with oil for like 10 years and not even scratch the surface. There's so many products out there to try, so many different ways to use the mediums. There's just infinite possibilities, which is why I love it so much. And I'll never get bored. It's been almost a decade now. Eight years is, we could just round that up to a decade and I'm obsessed literally obsessed. My whole life revolves around oil painting, so. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.